Okay there, folks. Right, I'll try to make this one pretty quick, although I know, knowing me, it won't be. It's regarding United again, Man United, and mainly Eric Ten Hag. It comes on the back of a message he had uh, uh, yesterday for a chap called Shaz. Uh, nice fella, sent me a couple of messages, and I replied to them, and I sent him a rather long-winded one. But my long-winded one seems very apt now with what I've just read on one of these websites. I think it was the Metro website. The Metro was saying at the moment... Sir Jim Ratcliffe is open to getting rid of virtually everybody at the club, barring three players. He says he's happy to keep just three. Um, what I'll do, I'll read you what Shazzy's message, and I'll also read you uh, what I replied to, how I replied to it, and then I'll tell you the three that Jim is for keeping. Now, it won't be true. They won't be looking at keeping just three. Obviously, they won't get rid of the bulk of them anyway. You know what? Pay the money and pay the wages. They're on too much of a good thing at United. But there'll be more than three they want to keep anyway. There's a couple of omissions there that he definitely would be keeping. I know that for a fact. Let me put the bins on and I'll get the messages up. I might have to get a bit close here, so please forgive me. But Shaz messaged me first yesterday and I messaged him back. Then he sent a further message and he put on it, I appreciate your response and I understand your frustration uh, above and beyond. Uh, he says, I just can't watch my team with any real confidence at the moment and he doesn't know when it's ever going to change. I know where it's coming from. They're up and down. You don't know when they're going to be good or bad. More often than not, they're going to be bad or they're going to start good and go bad. They're going to get where, they're going to get in front and give games away like they've done many times in the last few weeks with them stupid penalties. Anyway, he put on there, I'm Ten Hag in, just to say. So he's saying he would like them to keep Eric Ten Hag. He says, once we have our players back and get to spend some more money in the summer... I believe the road back to winning starts then. But for now, all we are doing is living under false hope. We're going from game to game. He's, and, he, and then he puts something about other vids I've done. So that was the end of that. So he's for Ten Hag. I did a message, I think, yesterday or day before, saying he's on his way out now. I really can't see anything else other than that. I've always been in his camp, Ten Hag's. Then I turned in him about six weeks. I said, he's got to go. A couple of games went really, really badly. And, I, and then I thought, I've seen some green shoots. And, then, and I'm just thinking to myself, we're a team, as I said yesterday, day before playing, with no plan, no B, no B game, no C game, no no nothing. There's no plan. He's got players that aren't playing for him, or one in particular in Rashford that's just not doing anything for him whatsoever. Uh, tactically, we see him really, really poor. We're getting in front many, many times and giving games away, giving points away, which is crazy. Um, there just seems to be nothing there. I mean, worried with Eric is as well. Going forward, how's the money going to be spent if he does stay? He's always said he's full, in full control of all signings and everything goes past him. And he was given that assurance by the bub and they took him on. But since Jim's come in, I think Sir Jim is of a different opinion. He thinks himself, Mr Ashworth, when he gets here, and the fellow from, is it Wilcox, from Southampton, they're in charge of things and Eric himself doesn't like that. So there's going to be friction with that one anyway, even if they keep him, as to who is behind the transfers when all said and done. But the biggest problem is anyway, even if, it, if it's the others behind them, Eric's going to be unhappy. But if Eric's going to be behind all the transfers, I'm thinking to myself, well, his track record hasn't been brilliant with transfers. So I would be worried about who's coming in here. You know, um, but anyway, this is the response I gave yesterday to uh, to Shaz. Um, I put, I wanted slash want him in. But for me, it seems some won't play for him, especially Rashford. Some of the signings aren't good enough. And I listed Anthony and possibly Onana there. Some are now too old. I listed Varane and Casimiro. Some are not good enough, although they weren't signed by Tanag. There's Wambasaka, Martial, Sancho. Uh, though he can also be in the won't play for Tanag column because he doesn't want to play for Tanag as well. Some are always injured. I'll give you Martinez, Shaw. Our best player will never play for us again, but I've put in brackets, though I would love to be proved wrong here. That is Greenwood. I know lots won't agree with me on that, but I think he should play for us again. If you look at past videos, you'll see why I say that. Um, and that, for me, shows loads of negatives. The only positives for me are Bruno, Garnaccio, Garnaccio and Mano. Uh, they're all absolutely brilliant. Uh, and I mean brilliant. Um the forward moves recently, as in move the game forward by Maguire and Dello has been Dello has been impressive. They've been better this year than last year, so they're going in the right direction. Um, but when I read back, all all I see it, it is woe there. Everything I've said there is there's more woe than positives. Um, I just see Eric having a huge job if he was to stay. I mean, a huge, huge job if he was to stay. Um, and I think to myself. 
if he does stay, as I said earlier, who signs the next lot of players? Who signs them? I I, I don't know who signs them. You know, but then again, if we get rid of Tanag, who comes in next? There's nobody out there. There's no absolute world beater out there for my money. Now, going back to that Metro piece, this is what they're saying in the Metro. They're saying that um, Sir Jim and his, his, his uh, cronies there that are in there with him are happy to get rid of everybody if they have to. The only three that they would keep is two of the ones I said. Menu, Garnacho, and Hoyland. Now, I didn't list Hoyland in that. He's done okay this year. He's a very, very little service, and you can't blame him for having no service. But although he's looked good in, in spurts and from time to time, he's not always looked great, and he is a work in progress. He's a young kid. You know, I'd keep him as well, but he's a young kid. I mean, for me, if they could get Harry Maguire in next year, that'd be brilliant, but maybe that won't happen. But but I put, wait a minute, no Bruno. They wouldn't keep Bruno. Now, I know he's full of histrionics, diving all over the place and arms waving and whatever else, but he's brilliant. He's one of the best players in the league. There's no doubt about that. And his figures this year back it up. His assists and his goal scored are brilliant. Uh, and his minutes on the field are absolutely brilliant. I read something only yesterday, a day before, and I can't remember exa exactly what it was. But in about the three and a half, four years he's been with us, he's missed about 12 games. They've been for suspensions and minor injuries. I mean, he plays minute after minute after minute, never wants to come off, never wants to be on the subs bench. Even if he's got minor injuries, he puts his hands up and wants to play. And he plays through the pain barrier. Um... I think he's brilliant. You wouldn't get rid of Bruno. Um, I wouldn't get rid of Martinez, assuming we can get him fit. I think there's a cracking player there. For me, with Martinez, as I've said in the past, I think I probably wouldn't even have him at centre-back. If they can't find another world-class holding mid central midfielder, imagine him and Maynard together in central midfield. I think they'd be brilliant. I think they'd be brilliant. Uh, and he's got pace as well, and he's good distributing the ball. And were Harry to stay in central defence, he could help Harry out. You need one world-class centre-back, one other, either to partner Martinez or to partner Maguire. But if you leave Maguire in, you've got a problem with his pace. But if you shore up that midfield and have two really cracking defensive midfielders in, in Maino and uh, Martinez, but with Maino given a bit more licence to move forward and Martinez protecting him, you know, I think Martinez can protect that central midfield and protect old Harry there. Um, so I'd definitely, definitely be keeping Martinez. Um, I'd be keeping Shaw and Dallow, although I think there's still probably better fullbacks out there. Shaw at the moment is injured with regularity. Dallow is coming on, but he's better in attack than he is defence, but he's coming on. Um, I mean, I'd love the boy from, um, that's just won the Bundesliga there, the, the Dutch lad. Um, his, his goal assists and his goals far are fantastic. He's defending it great, but he puts people on the back foot, there's no doubt about that. But... I'd keep Shaw and Dallow. I'd keep McTominay, and I was for McTominay going earlier on this season, but he's done really well for us. But for me, he's only a substitute. He's never a starter. I'd keep uh, young Diallo, the, the winger there. I'd have him over on Anthony any day of the week. He's not been given a chance yet. I think there's a player there. And as I said, keep Harry Maguire. I'd keep all the kids. I'd get rid of everybody else. Everybody else. I wouldn't have a problem at all. Um, but when you read that, I'm sure they're not only looking at keeping three players, as I say. But if they're the only three that with that they think that they just can't afford to lose, like the Crown Jewels, doesn't it say what kind of job they think either Eric's got in front of him next year or whoever comes in? It just shows if if there's any, even if there's that much truth in in, uh, in that um, press release in the Metro there, even just even no matter how much of it's truth, if they even just a, a little whiff of it. Isn't that telling us how bad as United fans they think we are? That they don't only keep three people out of the starting eleven and the whole squad for that matter. It's worrying, folks. It really is. If you're a United fan, it's a, it's a real worry. Um, and I'm one that is definitely worried at this moment in time because I just... I don't know. Um, I, I don't like firing managers and constantly firing them. I'm constantly firing them. I'd stick with Eric next year if you if you knew we would turn it around. But on what we've seen these last three months, how can you have any faith in it? You just can't. You just can't. And again, I'll go back to Rashford. I mean, if Eric stays, what's the point in keeping Marcus? Because he's not playing for him. He's not doing anything for him. I've done loads of pieces on Marcus. And Marcus thinks the old world's on his back, you know, on social media. And they probably are. But as I've said, the problem with Marcus isn't that his farm took a dip. It's just that he's not working. All he has to do is look at the blue half of Manchester, 
look at the opposite wing so Rashford plays on and look at young Foden and see the amount of work Foden gets through. When they've got most of the ball anyway and all the team work, it's not like he's working on his own Foden. He does what everybody else does. He runs his blood to water. He never stops with or without the ball. If he didn't do it, he'd get hooked off. Pep wouldn't leave him on there. I'll tell you what, we'd get a better player in Rashford if he was with Pep because Pep wouldn't let him get away with what he's getting away with at Old Trafford. Absolutely no chance at all. Absolutely no chance. If he didn't put a shift in, he wouldn't get on the following week. He would not get on. And that's the kind of tough love he needs. He needs to miss four or five games. Same with this Anthony fella. He's not been good enough all season. Keep saying it and I'll say it again. Diallo should have played till the end of the season. Let's see if there's a player there or not. Anyway... Um, good messages from you yesterday she has good messages there um, I liked them uh, and I know you want Eric and I know you're a big fan I know, I know you want what's best for him I do myself but at this moment in time I'm pulling my hair out I don't know which way they should turn but what I do know is there are lots of players that need to be shown the door and more importantly the players that come in and replace them have got to be a better quality than we've been signing of late because for my money the only great player we've signed over the last year or two is probably Martinez and the problem with him is He's injured regularly at this moment in time, but there's a player there. Um, but for me, I'd have no problem starting him centre midfield. No problem at all. Just means then you probably need two world-class centre-backs as opposed to one. You definitely need one, whatever happens. Anyway, I'll leave that with you. That's my thoughts. I might be wrong, but that's my thoughts. It's what I do.